liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. We hadn't sat down at this table for a little while. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah. I've been on vacation. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. I was bored. I read a lot. Oh, yeah? That's kind of I a, did va- some other that's things a vacation too. for you, right? I spent, sort of, um, I spent more time at actual bars than I usually do. Well, that's not a bad thing. It's expensive, though. It is pricey. I got I get far less expensive and better booze at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh. But, you know, trying to be more sociable, generally. Yeah. Get out there and meet people. Yeah. Meet people in this big old world we live in. Yeah, but it's a little bitty world here. Yeah, that's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Um, so what were you telling me about the... Gadsden flag before we got on? Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I didn't want to like go a deep dive into this on the podcast because I've only like heard about it passingly. But um, so I'm sure there may be listeners that know a little more about this than have all the details that I don't quite have. But yeah, this kid was um, had a Gadsden flag patch on his backpack and was like... Which is, for those that don't know, is, yes. the, is the don't tread on me rattlesnake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the the common one, the yellow flag. Yeah. And um yeah, they he got like I don't know if he got kicked out of I don't think he got kicked out of school, but he like got drugged to the principal's office and like this whole big thing over it and because the teacher was accusing it of being like a, a hate symbol or something. A hate symbol, like a racist type, like like, like slave, a con- connecting it to slavery is what she was doing. She's drawing the line between it and slavery. Well, no, but that flag's from the Revolutionary War. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, quite the opposite of yeah. what it was being portrayed as. Okay, yeah. That so. one's not Civil War. That one's Revolutionary War. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. There, was, were some, there were some non-slave states represented on that flag. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, completely wild. But so right now, like as we're recording. I, I want to know if it was a history teacher. Yeah, that's that, that was my question. Like, what does this teacher teach? Because, I mean, just the fact that something so ignorant could come from a teacher, not that I should be surprised by mm. that, but but it is bothersome. Mm. Um, well, I mean, she might be a younger teacher and have uh, come up since we stopped teaching history. That's very possible. Kind of sounds that way. Mm. Um, the blind leading the blind. But But, yeah, I'm not sure if the school board or somebody, it's been overturned. And that happened like yesterday or something. And but don't tread on me. He's trending on trending on Twitter, Twitter right now, or X or whatever we call that. <laughs> it will be that Twitter platform. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, which I thought was pretty cool. Like it's pretty neat that you know something that we're into is trending. You know. Yeah. Well, and uh, like I've always liked the uh, the more libertarian approach to that. Anyway, like the don't tread on me thing is is great. Yeah. yeah. But. The, the libertarian one is like, don't tread on anyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, and that's the reason I like... It's the, not just about me. <laughs> well, that's the reason I like the porcupine over the snake. Yeah. You know, because the porcupine, you know, like, as long as you don't mess with the porcupine, you're fine. Yeah. But once you mess with the porcupine, you get the quills. <laughs> <laughs> it's wholly defensive. Exactly, exactly. I don't know if that's true. I wonder if that's true. I don't know. Porcupines don't just like... Run. Well, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they actually do attack with those <laughs> they, things. They could be mean like possums or something. Well, I'm sure they're mean if you mess <laughs> with them, but like... I mean, Possums I, are mean even when I you don't, don't. I don't picture... Raccoons? Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I just don't picture... A, a, um, There's some city people out there going, what are these people talking <laughs> we, about? We in the country out here. <laughs> <laughs> We're in lower Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have a lot of porcupines out here, but no, there's plenty of possums. So there's raccoons. possums, though. Oh yes, there is. Armadillos. We we got all kinds. Oh of man, little... you can find one of those on the side of the road at any time. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. Hey, rooting around in my backyard a lot of times too. Yeah. I wish they would take care of that cricket or whatever's decided to set up shop right next to my bedroom window. Oh, yeah. It's making a bunch of noise in the middle of the night. Uh, I sleep light, so <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say it wouldn't be a problem for me. <laughs> Um, well, I, sir, well, I don't know what even, what is the big news? Um, I mean, like I say, I where mean, do we start? Well, I don't know. The big news since we last recorded would be the Pergosian. Yevgeny Pergosian. Yeah. 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 He died. Yeah. Um, the, uh, are you sure about that? Well, um, no, not completely, but I'm fairly sure at this point, like Russia has now said that they, the DNA testing has shown that. That he was there. That he was, yeah, on that plane. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, well, who, and the Russians would be the ones to like, like try to not try to move the narrative that he wasn't there. Yeah, I, maybe I don't know. Maybe like maybe. I mean, I really don't know. It's like kind of an odd situation. Like I mean, they would publicly want to deny that they did that. Yeah, the whole thing is is strange. Um, the guy. All right. So, of course, the Western narrative is Putin had him killed, of course. Um, yeah. It was an assassination. Putin had him killed. Uh, of course, this is, you know, based on this, like, really popular Western belief that Putin is a cold-blooded killer and is going around assassinating people all the time. Yeah. Um, I actually heard a clip. I almost pulled this one, uh, but I decided not to in the end. I, I heard a clip on uh, No Agenda where they're going over some of the big... Um, assassination attempts that have been connected to Putin. Yeah. Is this and, the poisonings? Yeah. And only one of them was <laughs> successful. I was like, I mean, you went through this big long list, but only one guy died. Yeah. Right. A lot of attempts being made here. Yeah. But. And this guy doesn't seem like somebody who would just leave it half done or whatever. Like yeah. if Putin nothing doesn't, else about Putin it. doesn't seem like the type that shoots and misses. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. You know. <laughs> So, and then just lets it go after that. Yeah, right. Well, it's over. I tried. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh well. Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> it's like Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um. So, and I, I was reading a little bit. Uh, it was a blurb actually about a um a biography of Putin, and I probably should have written down the name of the of the author just so that I could cite it for people that were interested. Um. But he he had like a whole chapter on the all these assassinations that were attributed to Putin yeah. and went through it and said really there's only one yeah. here that could be reasonably attributed to Putin the rest of them were connected to uh, some chechen leader or a lot of them were connected to some chechen leader um there were some uh there were several that just didn't seem to be connected with the russian government at all like not with yeah. the kremlin like probably yeah, things but, that they yeah. have done to other people or but something. But don't you think, like, if you're the one, like, pulling all of these strings, that's the way you want it to look. Well, yeah, maybe. I, I, I suppose so. But the point being that all of this is essentially without evidence. Yeah. Like, there's there's not really any evidence. to, And even the one that he said probably was ordered by Putin um, or done with his knowledge or whatever, he said even then there's not there's not actually any evidence to connect, yeah. to connect them. And the only thing connecting Prigozhin's death with Putin is that uh, it happened on the same day that Putin um, demoted the, uh, the military guy whose name I can't, th- Sirovikin. Sira- that seems right. Yeah. Probably should have written that one down too. Yeah. Um, uh, Sirovikin who supposedly knew about the, and I keep saying coup, like put quotes around that. It's not really, a, it wasn't really a coup. Yeah. It wasn't really a coup attempt even. Yeah. Um, a, I mean, it seemed to me more like just a like call for attention. Yeah, like that. That was my take. But. Well, that's kind of the the point. Um, but anyway, this guy Sirovikin supposedly knew about it uh, in advance, and um, and the Prigozhin's death happened on the same day that Putin demoted Sirovikin. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's the uh, that's how they're connecting it. Oh yeah. Oh well, it was all planned to get both of these, you know traitors at once or whatever so he killed the one and demoted the demoted other one the, like, I, I don't, that, all right. that seems fair yeah <laughs> right. so um and and that's the thing to remember like this quote-unquote coup uprising protest is probably the best yeah i mean description it wasn't against putin like yeah. prigozhin wasn't speaking out against putin he was speaking out against um, the military leadership in Russia, uh, primarily um, Sergei Shoi- Shoigu, uh, who's the defense minister, and um, Valery uh, Gerasimov. I okay. have no idea if I'm saying that. I don't know if it's hard G or soft G at the beginning. But anyway, yeah. um, and he's the, the head of the general staff. Okay. And those are the two people primarily that Prigozhin was complaining about and wanted them removed from office and so forth. Yeah. When all this happened. Um, never mind the fact that when the the uprising or the protest was actually happening, if Putin wanted him dead, that would have been a really good time to do it. Right. Because <laughs> the Russian military could have crushed that little uprising in no time. Yeah. It could have killed them all. Yeah. Um, so I I doubt. I mean, it could be, certainly. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I wouldn't put it past Putin. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I doubt that he actually ordered this. Um, yeah. I, I think that there's some more likely 
culprits if it was an assassination at all. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to an interview with Scott Ritter. Um, he was saying that it would have been really difficult to have performed this assassination if that's what it was. And he was suggesting that it was actually just an accident. Like, yeah. accidents happen. And um, But he was saying that they, they had it's two It's kind of convenient that it happens to somebody of this stature yeah, in a time where like he's on the radar. No, like. I, I, I agree. I agree. But I'll, I'll give you Ritter's argument. Then. Okay. Um, so Ritter was saying there were two planes uh, that were taken off with um, uh, Wagner Group staff or whatever. Yeah. Um, the plane that blew up was the one that had like kind of more senior staff and then some kind of middle staff. And then the other <laughs> one had, you know, well, actually I guess it was, it was more or less the same kind of um, relation except that the senior staff weren't as senior on the other plane. Yeah. And he said, um, in order for them to have put a bomb on the plane, they would have had to done, had to have done it like right as it was getting ready to take off. Yeah, because because they didn't know who was getting on what plane exactly yeah um so and they couldn't have done it in advance because all of these teams have security that they're like sweeping this stuff all the time and yeah. he said that's actually the most likely thing is yeah. that the security staff who had weapons and explosives and so forth uh as part of their duty as being a protection detail that they would have been armed up and had you know uh, grenades and probably some explosives <laughs> and definitely a bunch of ammunition and so forth. He said the most likely thing is that something happened and that stuff blew up accidentally. Oh, yeah. yeah, it just went off. Yeah, like yeah. their stash of weapons and so forth on the plane that they carried with them all the time, something just went, went wrong and yeah. yeah, and that caused the the accident. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you're gonna say it was an assassination. There's there's a lot of other people that might be interested in the death of Prigozhin. Yeah, um, I, I would say that seems like the more more likely case to me if it is assassination is that it was somebody in the military or yeah, and that seems most likely to me. Remember when the Wagner Group was was doing their protest or uprising or whatever you want to call it? Mm -hmm. um, they did shoot down a, a Russian helicopter, yeah. um, had a dozen or more troops on it. Yeah. Um, he was speaking out very strongly against the military leadership. Yeah. Uh, those guys might be interested in getting rid of him. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. Uh, the Wagner group has active operations in Africa. Um, so any, any outside group that is interested in Africa, including the U S but I, I don't think the U S had anything to do with this one either. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, just to, for fullness here, like, that's an interest. The French, you yeah. know, like there's there's a bunch of nations that have an interest in what's going on in Africa and don't want Russia involved. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's anybody who would like to kind of re-spark the rift between the Russian government and the Wagner Group or the Russian yeah. military and the Wagner Group. Yeah. Um, which would, of course, include Ukraine. Yeah, right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, divert attention, like have them fight amongst themselves instead of fighting them. Yeah. Um, and then the U.S. again, or any of the NATO countries, really. Yeah. Poland, who knows? No. Yeah. So, um, and given all that, honestly, the most likely explanation, now that I'm thinking about it, does seem to be that it's just an accident. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too I, many, I don't know, there's just too many other things. It, yeah. Too many Too many things would have had to line up, it seems like, for somebody to have planted cool. an explosive and, yeah. and done this. Of course, it could have yeah. been one of his own people. Yeah. It, it could have been a, you know, a, a suicide bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Who or, knows? Yeah. I, I mean, or, yeah, or it could have been one of those guys that got on the other plane. You yeah. Know? Um, could be that, uh, that one of his security staff had a brother that was on the helicopter that got shot down. Yeah. I, you never know, I guess. I mean, yeah. so at, at the point of wild speculation, we're just going to leave it, I suppose. Well, yeah. Um, I mean. But it is interesting that it is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it certainly created some headlines for a couple of days. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think of more interest um, is actually the other thing that was going on in Africa, uh, which was the BRICS conference. Oh, yeah. Um, and for those unaware, the, the BRICS is an economic alignment i mean it's not exactly a an alliance it, is a, it more of a like i mean i thought it was more of like a trade partnership 
Yeah, yeah. Is so that, I, I would say it's a, it's an economic alignment okay. between yeah. um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Yeah. Uh, but they had, um, and, and you know, this has been kind of the the counterpoint to the um, the U.S. led economic world order uh, that includes um, like the the World Bank and the IMF and uh, of course the SWIFT system and all all this other stuff yeah. and and that's actually their goal is to create a counterpoint to the U.S. led um, world economic system yeah. so that you can function outside of the wor- of the U.S.'s yeah. Monopoly. Economy, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they have just added, oh, well, beginning in January 2020, they have agreed to add new nations uh, starting January 2024. And um, the nations that they have added is uh, Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. That's this interesting. Is, yeah, this is actually pretty significant. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, I think Argentina is the third largest economy in South America, uh, yeah. Brazil being the first. Yeah. So now they got the first and third largest economies in South America. Um, they have uh, Egypt, Ethiopia, and South Africa, um, which are the more developed nations in um, in Africa. Sounds um, like sounds like a lot of oil, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, there, there's definitely a lot of oil in this. Saudi, UAE, Iran. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. Like, that's and so, and of course, R- Russia, um, and Russia also is big in oil and natural gas. Yeah. Um, you know, so they they've actually got reasonable economic power here, and they're talking about adding additional nations beyond. And there are plenty of nations that are interested. And probably yeah. the most important thing to note here is that. These now 11 nations that will be BRICS starting in January, um, they there's a bunch of nations that have good relations with the U.S. It's yeah. it's not a it's not a group that's aligned against the U.S. It's aligned against the U.S. monopoly. It's yeah. it's aligned against the unipolar order. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so. And and we've kind of forced like the U.S.'s actions, the U.S. decision to use economics to punish nations that don't get in line with what they want is a, a real strong impetus to this. Because even nations that have good relations with the U.S. have to be a- afraid of running afoul of U.S. interests yeah. and having their economy turned off. Exactly. And this is kind of a stop. For that mm-hmm. it gives you an outlet if that d- was to happen that you've got somewhere to go exactly they've uh, created their own um, international bank uh, yeah. called the development bank I think it's the BRICS development bank or something like that um, and they're uh, trying to do uh, like facilitate trade between these nations and local currencies they're trying to de-dollarize yeah. like de-dollarization is a, a big part of what they're trying to do um, to get out from under the US dollar because they don't have to use the U.S. dollar. It's just that most trade happens, international trade happens in U.S. dollars. Yeah. But they're trying to create an organization that trades outside of the U.S. dollar yeah. um, and uh, and isn't dependent on the U.S.'s uh, control of the economic system. Yeah. And uh, And this could be dangerous for the U.S. economy in the long run. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it shouldn't be. I, well, like, the truth is that the U.S. shouldn't really care. It shouldn't be if we behaved ourselves. Yeah. Like, that's the that's kind of my take on it, is, like, if we just, like, traded and was, like, just a normal country that did normal things, mm-hmm. it probably wouldn't be a big deal. But we try to leverage our economic power over these other countries, and I think you only do that for so long without creating without there being some kind of backlash to that. Yeah, and this is exactly it. So I- Iran as a part of it um, would no longer be economically isolated. Exactly. Um, the, Russia as a part of it, no longer economically isolated. Yeah. We couldn't possibly isolate China even if we wanted oh, yeah, to. Where, like our economies are too interdependent. But they but, need, they, but the the BRICS system though needs some of those big economies mm-hmm. that are. Yeah, India's same way. It would be yeah. really hard to isolate the Indian economy. Yeah. Um, but but the danger is there, and it, it's enough of a threat to them that they want an outlet. Yeah. Um, they want a secondary option, and of yeah, course, absolutely. Saudi Arabia has gotten really unhappy with 
the U.S. recently anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Biden was trying to get them on board with limiting oil production or no, sorry, of stepping up oil production to uh, to counter Russia's oil production. And they were like, no, thanks. No, we won't do that. Yeah. yeah we're going to keep things as they are. And now they're joining BRICS yeah. um, as well. And then uh, something that I find really interesting, we were talking, I don't know, a month or so ago about uh, China facilitating um, diplomatic ties, the restoration of diplomatic ties between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And yeah. of course this conflict, ideological or religious or whatever, conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia um, has, uh, has been kind of a defining feature of diplomacy in the Middle East for a while. Yeah. Um, and, and one thing that peace between them might do is finally actually end the war in Yemen, <laughs> right? <laughs> which would be really amazing. But the, the, they're both being members of BRICS, um, is another step towards them normalizing relations and, and actually developing good relations. And the U S and Israel's particularly will not be happy about that. Oh, yeah. Um, they're, they, they leverage the conflict uh, between Iran and Saudi Arabia to keep chaos in the Middle East, um, to maintain, you know, just a general state of conflict. And if these two nations make friends with each other, like the they were before we got involved, yeah, all right. um, that kind of puts an end to that. Yeah. And, uh, and beyond that, there's actually, there's, a, um, there's another economic, um, organization there might be some security ties with this one but i can't remember uh called the shanghai cooperation organization or something like that it's the sco i can't remember it's shanghai something organization um that uh i want to say iran and saudi are both seeking membership in oh yeah um there's some kind of saudi might actually already be a part of it and Iran seeking membership, or I might have that backwards, or they might both be in route towards membership. But it, at any rate, like this is another organization, like a cooperative organization that they could both be a part of in the not too distant future <coughs> to kind of, you know, settle the conflict between them. Yeah. And I think that would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we'll see what happens. But I, you're not a neocon. That's definitely true. <laughs> definitely true. I like to see more peace, not less. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, more economic cooperation is only good for all of us. Yeah. I mean, there are individuals that it doesn't do well for, but you can find other ways. Yeah. I, I have never, I, I don't understand this desire to wage economic war with China. Yeah. This is a thing that comes up over and over and over again. You know, China's taking our jobs. They're, Building all the stuff that that we should be building, and et cetera, et cetera, and like, yeah, but they make all our stuff cheaper. Yeah, so I was yeah, say, they're selling that stuff to us. Yeah. So, <laughs> and we're we're giving them our worthless pieces of paper for it. Exactly, we're getting stuff out of it. We we yeah. win in the end. We're gaining wealth. Absolutely. Um, in this way, and while there are individuals whose uh, income, I guess, is less because um, because China has. We are we've shipped jobs overseas to China. Yeah, uh, I, I don't dispute that. There, there are losers in this. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. But on the whole, everybody in the U.S. has cheaper stuff because of it. Yeah. In more ways than one, unfortunately. But yeah. Um. But they're spending less. Yeah. And everybody in the U.S. wants to be spending less right now because because prices are going up. <laughs> yeah. I, I bought four little books yesterday, and it cost me seventy dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's just insane. I those four books just three years ago, I yeah. think, yeah, would have cost me forty five. Yeah, <laughs> right. So almost doubled. Yeah. Um. I had a, a meal at a restaurant also, a meal and a drink, and it was thirty bucks. And I'm pretty sure three years ago it would have been twenty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's just what it is. Like, yeah. So, um, Printing all that money. And then to, to cap that off, the GOP debate happened and they almost didn't talk about economics at all. <laughs> <laughs> Which is 
Freaking insane, man. I mean, there were some people that tried to bring up economics, but it doesn't seem like there were really any questions like so was about that, how to deal with it. There was some talk about inflation, and that's... Was that debate on Fox? Uh, as it? I understand it, yes. I okay. had a hell of a time finding it, though. Yeah. I See, I haven't... I've only caught clips from it, so... Yeah. Right. I don't have um, cable TV, and it doesn't look like Fox ran it on their YouTube channel. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and I hunted on Rumble too, because I think Rumble had some kind of exclusive streaming agreement for it or something like that. Yeah. Uh, because, um, I did hear, uh, Glenn Greenwald talking about it. Of course, he's a Rumble partner or something. Yeah. And he was talking about because of that connection, um, he got really good seats at the debate and he'd never been to one before. Yeah. And, and actually, you know what, let's talk about the setup because what he was, what he was saying about that was really interesting. Um, so he said, you know, there were little groups of supporting various candidates around the room. Yeah. Uh, he said, but the, the best seats were given to the Republican donors, of course. Of course. And the microphones were in front of them. That's interesting. (laughs) So the crowd noise that you hear most of the time. Is the donors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or at least they're the loudest, like they're the most prominent in the. Well, and you can remember this back from when Trump was running where like Mm -hmm. Trump would say something and and start calling the donors out. Like, I know that guy, he's a big donor, blah, 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 blah. Like, so, I mean, this, this isn't something new. No, no, it's not new, but it was, it was interesting listening to Glenn Greenwald talk about the setup. Yeah. Um, so he said, you know, of course the, the crowd noise that you hear is skewed towards the Republican donor class. Yeah. Um, not your average voter. That, I mean, of course, we know that anyway, like yeah. you said, but... Uh, but it was interesting to get, like, another perspective from yeah. it. You know? uh, and eyes on, you know... Yeah, boots on the ground, as yeah. it were. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, was, it wasn't it was really that interesting, Yeah. Uh, the debate uh, on the whole. There were a couple of moments... That where I finally found it was um, Nikki Haley, speaking of neocons, yeah. uh, Nikki Haley's YouTube channel. Hmm. That's where I found the whole debate where with like nobody commenting over the top of it or anything. Yeah. I just wanted to hear, I didn't want to hear what somebody else had to say about it. I just wanted to hear. You just wanted to hear it and take yeah. it in. Um, and I, I almost pulled some clips from it, but the sound quality on her channel was so bad that like once I, f- like I would have had to, I would have to have made it much louder for you to hear it. Yeah. And um, once I'd done that, it the sound quality was so bad. You lose it. Yeah. yeah. So I gave up. I'm just going to have to explain. Yeah. Well, who do um, you think won? Who do I think won? Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy and Ron DeSantis. Oh, so you pick, so Ron DeSantis is in the hunt but for yeah, you as I, far I as the winner goes. Um, yeah. I think that he won by not losing. Okay. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, like he but, didn't perform badly. He didn't perform really well either, but I don't feel like he lost anything. Like he didn't self-destruct. He didn't. Yeah. There were some moments that he looked kind of weak, but. Um, <laughs> like, like when he was looking around to see if everybody else raised their hand and yeah. then he did. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one was. You want to talk about looking weak. That's it right there. Yeah. The Ukraine thing. So, um. He yeah he did. There were some moments where he didn't he didn't look that good. Um, he didn't. I, I don't think that he performed particularly well. I don't think he performed really. I don't think he performed badly either. Yeah. Um, he said some of the right things, but he he's I don't know. He still feels like he's kind of hedging a little bit. Yeah, like, I mean, uh, I know for me personally, like a lot of the stuff, I just don't know where he really stands, <clears throat> and I feel like that's intentional. That he yeah. wants to kind of make these decisions as the campaign goes along. <laughs> yeah, there's some he's he's trying to find a way to separate himself from Trump. Yeah, um, and what he should really ride on is is that culture war stuff. How he handled the the COVID thing. Yeah. That's that's where he needs to be. Tout and his it, time as governor. Yeah, and if he wants to, like, and that's a good way that he can separate himself from Trump too, because Trump allowed the lockdowns. Yeah. Trump allowed the mandates. Right, like you know he can make these cases that hey. Trump didn't step in and protect you from this stuff. I did. Absolutely. I protected my people. Everybody that I could, yeah. I protected. Yeah. Um, and he could separate himself a little bit on the Ukraine thing if he chose to. Now, yeah. he's, that's one of these places where he's kind of hedging, where he's like, well, I don't think that we should give any more, but it, he's not opposed to the war itself. Like, he just wants NATO to step up and do more. Yeah, and, the neighbors to do more. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he, he could... 
he could put his foot down about that and say, I don't think that we should be a part of it. And, you know, Trump's the guy that gave him weapons in the first place. Yeah. Like yeah. that's another place where well, he could separate himself from Trump. A- another place where he could do the same is on the vaccines because Trump there's is going to yeah. embrace the vaccine yeah. program and because he just can't, can't help himself not to, you know, because right. he was a part of that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's somewhere else he could step up and be like, look, you know, they want to force you to take these things. How do you feel about that? You yeah. know, um, for people that were big fans of like uh, George W, Nikki Haley did fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like if you're, if you're on board with the American empire, yeah, she sounded confident and competent in that regard. Yeah. As far as being just a good neocon. Yeah. I just completely disagree with her policy. I like, I don't know what it is about her. I hate her. Well, you hate her because of her policy. <laughs> yeah, like, she's I hate a her war because she's, Yeah, because yeah. she believes in the empire. Yeah, and I actually, I think DeSantis does too, and that's why I have a problem with him. Like, if you yeah. want me to criticize DeSantis, this is what what I have to say about it. Like, he was a um, he was a lawyer at Gitmo at Guantanamo <laughs> Bay for uh, almost all of 2006, wow. and he's been credibly accused of witnessing force feedings during hunger strikes, which the UN says is torture. Um, He, uh, at the debate, he said that he would launch a war on the Mexican cartels day one in office. That's scary. That's scary coming from a neocon. Yeah. (laughs) That's DeSantis though. That's what DeSantis said. Yeah. Um, But the, the reason, and we've got to believe that DeSantis is a neocon, like, like believing that that's the case, um, mm-hmm. him saying that he wants to launch a war on the the cartels, like that's scary because like he may actually like full fledged do it, you know? Yeah, and that would not create good relations with Mexico. They might be joining BRICS pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. The last thing we need is an unfriendly <laughs> Mexico at our border. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, regardless of what you think about what they're doing, of course, this is also this also makes him obviously a drug warrior. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's the other scary part. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's just, it's just an, an escalation of the unsuccessful 30, 40. How long have we been doing this Good now? God, I don't know. 30, 50, 40, 40? 50 years. I yeah. mean, it started Reagan maybe, it right? Was, I'm thinking Ra- so Reagan's been in were, the eighties. Yeah. The Reagan's where I remember it from. I don't know if okay. it came before him or not. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. I think Reagan kind of kicked that off. But yeah, let's say 40 years of drug war that hasn't accomplished anything. Yeah. Um, and it, and that's a huge escalation. That's like actually involving what should be a friendly neighbor nation. Yeah. Um, by invading their country. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To, so. Yeah. No. Uh, we we should be going the opposite direction. There there is a good way to rage war against the cartels, mm-hmm. but it's not to bring in the military and physically go to war with the cartels. It's to put them out of business. Yeah. I mean that's that's what that's how you win this war mm-hmm. is you just don't give them a, a client base anymore. Yeah, I mean it worked with the with the gangs after at the end of prohibition. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's actually yeah that's a really good example. <laughs> yeah. Same same style of attack. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, Nikki Haley, she uh, well okay, like quick summary of the people involved, I guess. Okay, so. We got DeSantis. I have concerns about his foreign policy stuff. I think he's a great governor. Um, yeah. He That's where he should stay. Let him stay there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want him in control of U.S. foreign policy. Yeah. Because that's where he scares me the most. That's where he's absolutely the worst. Yeah. And he doesn't have any control over that as a governor, but he has almost complete control of that as a president. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, please know. Yeah. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh he says a lot of great things. Yeah. Um, to me, this may sound silly. Okay. I, I, I don't. I don't know. But to me, he's too polished. It, it makes okay. him come off as insincere. So, so I had said the same thing. There's something about his cadence that's off to me, mm-hmm. and and I think that's what it is. Is just what you're saying. It's too polished. Like he he talks in this cadence that just seems scripted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it all seems like a, a show. Yeah, and it it makes him come off as insincere to me. Um, he's got charisma. Uh, yeah. he's clearly very smart. Um, oh, yeah. he's quick on his feet. Like, there's a lot of things that. I, and I'll tell you after actually after watching that, 
Like these first two guys, yeah. DeSantis and Ramaswamy, yeah. were definitely the two smartest people on the stage. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and I want somebody smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but there's the like there's very few people like me who don't who who can recognize that and well no and no no appreciate what it. I was gonna say is there are a few people like me who are smart but don't feel like you should have you would be better off telling other people how to live their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And so that concerns me a little bit about smart people in the presidency as well, is yeah. that they're so sure of that they're right. The right way that people should live that they try to force it on them. Yeah. Um like I you know, I don't yeah. know. Uh it, it may not be a concern. Certainly the things that Ramaswamy is saying wouldn't suggest that he would be that way, but I yeah. just I, I don't know if I can I don't know that I trust him. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you my take. I like him. Like I like mm-hmm. I like Vivek. I think he's um I don't know. I th- everything you said, I think he's charismatic. I think he's smart. He seems to have the right positions. Um so I like the guy. And he knows them in depth actually. Yeah. Well, did you hear him on part of the problem? Yes. Dave Smith did an interview with him. Mm-hmm. I, like that was the first I had ever heard of him. I was mm-hmm. like, "All right, I didn't realize how big he was that he was like actually like polling well enough to be in the debates and stuff when he had yeah. his debate, but or not debate, but when he had his appearance on Dave Smith. But um but I liked him. I was like, this guy's this guy's sharp. Mm-hmm. My kind of takeaway from just the clips and what I seen from him at the debate though tells me he may be auditioning for something. Well, okay, so th- yeah. The we should come back around to this because this is this relates back to Trump. Yeah. Um but I think that he what the way he's positioned himself is he's the not Trump Trump. Trump. Exactly. You know, yeah. so if or we may as well address it now, I guess. If if some for some reason yeah. legal issues assassination <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> but, the case may whatever. be yeah um whatever the cause may be or just the republicans not being willing to give trump a nomination because of concerns about the legal issues about whether he might be on the ballot in all the states cuz you don't want yeah your candidate as the republican party to not be on the ballot of every state and there are states that are threatening that because of the legal issues that he wouldn't qualify hey, for their ballot and so forth so my right. friend I saw this weekend mm-hmm. said we're going to be writing in trump this this next go yeah. around. Well, that's not what, in this state. The, that, well, that's what he said. Like, all yeah. I'm saying is he said, be prepared to write him in. Yeah, well, I wouldn't write him in either. But <laughs> well, I'm just I, I wouldn't vote for him if he was on the ballot. I'm just so saying I the, the <laughs> ground, I mean, he's hearing yeah. that from somewhere. Like, Yeah, well, I, California is already threatening to that Yeah. That they have cause to, to that remove he would him. Yeah, be disqualified from their state ballot or whatever. Yeah. Um. So if other states do that, then that puts the Republican Party in a weird position. Yeah. Because he he's popular enough with the Republican base that, like the Republican Party, the GOP is not going to want to not put him forward if he goes through the primaries and and wins. And wins absolutely. At the same time, the GOP does not want to put a candidate forward that's that, not on the that's ballot. not on the ballot in every state. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, they're not the Libertarian Party. <laughs> yeah. So this is this puts them in a weird position. I mean, like you know, they could. Just, care less about California. Like California is not going to Trump anyway, but, um, but there are States where it would matter. Oh, absolutely. It would. So hard to say it, but if for some reason Trump is not the, the GOP nominee yeah, and the base is really pushing for a Trump character character, then Vivek has set himself up to be that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd agree with that. Yeah. So, uh, then of course there's Mike Pence. Yeah. Talk about an empty suit. Exactly. That's exactly what I wrote down. Actually, (laughs) I wrote down empty suit. (laughs) He is. He's like the definition of it. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Even when when he was vice president, I felt that way. He's just, he, there's nothing there. He took a couple of little jabs at Ramaswamy during the debate that were kind of interesting actually. Oh, really? Um, but the person that actually took the best jab at Ramaswamy was, uh, Chris Christie. Yeah. Who I just wrote down douche. Like <laughs> God, I don't I like Chris Christie at all. He's just oh God. But there is like he has a a weird actually he has a weird kind of Trumpian charm because he's yeah. so 
brush. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And he called uh, Ramaswamy the chat GPT candidate or something like that, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, uh, like, I laughed at that. I was like, that okay, that was, that's, yeah, he sounds like chat GPT or something like that. I don't remember exactly what he said. but It, it seems kind of racist, but it's kind of funny. It was, yeah, it was good. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, don't care much for him. Tim Scott, mm. I don't really have anything to say about. He's, yeah. he's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, he's just, he's just average. He's, yeah. he, I don't know, he seems like a nice guy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say about him. Yeah. I actually didn't make any note about Tim Scott cause he just didn't, I don't know much about him. To impress be me in any him. way. Yeah. Um, was he a governor at some point? Yeah. South Carolina. Right. Okay. I think that sounds right. Like I, I want to, I, I don't know. Something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, We'll come back to Nikki Haley. Yeah. Uh, you know, Nikki Haley, she's just, she's just a neocon. Yeah. That, that's it. She's there. She's there promoting the Biden foreign policy. That's what she's there doing. <laughs> right. Which I, I, I mean. You can why, appreciate. Yeah. Why even be there yeah. is actually what I thought. Like yeah. if you're promoting the foreign policy and that's your primary role as president yeah. of the guy who's in office right now, why are you, what are you competing for? Yeah. <laughs> right. Com- I guess the only thing that you're competing for is to make sure that people don't have a choice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you get the Biden foreign policy or you get my Biden foreign policy. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. Um, but she and uh, Ramaswamy went back and forth a little bit and like her bit on the foreign policy, on the Ukraine specifically, but like, this is where I wanted to pull some clips. Because she just lied. Yeah. I, I like, heard the clip. She just said a bald face, bald face, bald face. I don't know what the right. expression actually is. <laughs> Me either. Um, anyway, she told a big effing lie. <laughs> yeah. That Putin uh, had said that when he, once he was done with Ukraine, he was going to invade Poland next. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just like. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it, where, it is where did you come up with this? Like, so if anybody can find this quote for me, send it to me because I'd be interested. Yeah. But I wouldn't waste my time if I were you because it yeah, does not it's exist. It's not out there. Yeah. He has never said anything like this. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. So I don't know. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. Um, he uh, he actually had a good comeback on her when she was when he. Yeah. She's saying that he didn't have any foreign pol- policy experience and it showed. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but your foreign policy experience has been a disaster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but he didn't say it at the right time. But that's that's like that's exactly that, the response. But so it's like, the truth. show me yeah. the success in your foreign policy that you've been promoting. Absolutely. It's just failure after failure. Yeah. So yeah, your foreign policy experience doesn't actually speak well for you, I don't think. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have a whole lot of experience in messing and, things yeah, up. And ruining the world. <laughs> yeah. Um so I, but she's just she's just terrible, and then you know she wants to be at the throat of Iran, and she wants to be I, I don't know she she's just she's, a neocon. She's just terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other two guys were Asa Hutchinson. That guy is just a nobody. He's the Arkansas governor. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he's just he he's he's just a nobody. There's no sense in talking about him. Yeah. Um, and and. Kind of unfortunately, the same is true for the North Dakota governor, Doug Burgum, that was up there. He's the last guy up there. Yeah. But, like, he was terrible on foreign policy, like everybody but Vivek and kind of DeSantis. Yeah. But um, but the rest of his stuff, he actually said some, like, really pragmatic, reasonable things. Yeah. About economies and, you know, managing issues and so forth. I Like, he, he just seems, he's very folksy. Yeah, yeah. I can appreciate that. Which, yeah, I mean, there's some charm in that, but then, yeah, then he starts talking about Ukraine. And <laughs> and it's all lost. All is lost. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, on the whole, yeah, I think I think DeSantis, Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, depending on what you're looking for. Yeah, they stood out. Yeah, stood out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe it'll get whittled down to just them. I think that it was good for everybody that Trump wasn't there. Yeah. I think Trump made a smart play not being there, but I think it was good for the Republican Party that he wasn't there too. Yeah. Because then, well, actually, most of them ended up attacking Ramaswamy yeah. uh, during the thing. But if Trump had been there, everybody would have been would after have been Trump. After him, yeah. um, and which, it did kind of force them to... Which creates an entertainment value oh, that yeah, is no, unmatched. No. <laughs> I, I would have... 
that part I would have loved. television, that, as that's, far as I'm that's concerned. That's the unfortunate thing about Trump not being there, is that we didn't yeah. get to hear Trump engage with these people. Yeah. But <laughs> um, it did kind of force them to uh, to kind of focus on what's wrong with the existing administration instead of trying to attack Trump. Yeah. Um, but when they didn't do that, they were attacking Ramaswamy, which... Yeah. Which helped him a ton. He yeah. probably wouldn't have done so well at that debate if they hadn't if kept they, talking about him. Because the, yeah. the rule is that if they mention you, you in get their speak. response, you get to respond back. Absolutely. So they kept going after Ramaswamy, so he got a whole bunch of time. Yeah, exactly. And he has a lot to say. <laughs> and nobody was really going after DeSantis. Yeah. So he got less time. But yeah. I, again, I think that's kind of good for him. Like he's... The yeah. best thing he can do is not screw up. Yeah. But... I can see Ramaswamy surging past him if it continues this it, way. Yeah. It, but I think future debates there will be a lot fewer people on the stage, so yeah. he'll he'll get more time, and yeah. we'll see what he what he can do. Yeah. I don't know. So, should be interesting. I like him. Like I say, it it would be interesting to me if Trump took him Ramaswamy as a, or Ramas, DeSantis. No, Ra- Ramaswamy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to me if he took if Trump took him as his running mate. Uh, that's not gonna happen. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I felt like that's what he was auditioning for. I felt like um, he was out there trying to to mm. woo Trump into picking him for VP. No, I can't. I can't see him picking. Well, yeah, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I don't. I think it would be more like a cabinet position or something. Yeah, maybe. Um, well, he'll definitely if should Trump win, he would definitely be part of cabinet. I don't see how that would yeah. unless they just had some kind of big falling out during the primary somewhere along the line. But I just don't feel like. Um, Vivek is positioning himself that way. I think he's going to position himself as close to Trump through this campaign as he can. And like I say, I don't know. That's just yeah. my feeling. But Yeah, I, I think that the way he set himself up is that he's the torchbearer for Trump should Trump get taken out in some way. Yeah, yeah. And that's not a bad place to be no. in the Republican Party right now. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and I, I think that I would prefer a Vivek to Trump for a number of reasons. Yeah. Um, he's just smarter. Yeah. He, I think that he probably is better at the game, the political game than Trump turned out to be. Yeah. Um, he has a deeper understanding of the issues. Yeah. He reads, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's something, <laughs> uh, you know, um, he's, he's somebody who really ha- did kind of pull himself up from nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Trump makes those claims, but, Ramaswamy's parents were immigrants. Yeah, right. Like, I don't know. I mean, it, it's in a group that tends to be successful when they come over here, and obviously Ramaswamy was. But uh, it, it, I don't think that his, I don't think he came from money. Yeah. In the same way that Trump did. Yeah. Um, and of course, then there's the like. Uh, I think that this is likely true. I don't know. I didn't check on it. I, you know, but I've heard that Ramaswamy got uh, startup cash from Soros, really, and his early ventures or whatever. But again, like immigrant family, some guy offering you a bunch of money for your startup. Like I, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, I don't think that he's beholden to him in any way. No, I wouldn't. I can't imagine. So, I mean, but maybe who knows? Yeah, There's weird connections in this world. Yeah. Talk about weird connections. So I saw a thing just today, I think, that um, Eminem is sending Vivek like a cease and desist because he keeps using rapping his songs oh. and, and some of his stuff. <laughs> and Eminem is sending him a cease and desist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is, I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah. I don't know. And I heard him. He's actually pretty good. Like <laughs> Vivek is. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, so he is the real Slim, slim Shady. I, I am. I am interested in having somebody young in the White House. Yeah. I don't know where that takes us, really. I'd be terrified of a young progressive in the White House, but a young conservative doesn't scare me as much. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I'd rather have an, an old Democrat than an old Republican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> Which, where do, where just, does that put you, RFK-wise? Like, um. You know, that's not bad. I'd rather have him than anybody else that seems to be vying for it on the Democrat side. Yeah. Um, It'd be wild. I mean, I, I like, I certainly have issues with RFK too, but uh, on the things that are most important to me, 
he pretty yeah. good. So I have an interesting question. If um, Vivek was the nominee, mm-hmm. and it was it was him, um, some Democrat and some Libertarian, where do you end up on that spectrum? Well, it depends on who the Libertarian is, I guess, and who and and what else we find out about Ramaswamy. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I mean, I, I'm in the end, I vote for the person that I think would do the most good. Yeah. And I'm not really concerned with the party. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, I understand that completely. Um, I haven't, I'm trying to think just to make sure, but yeah, yeah in, since 2000, since 2000, when I voted in my first presidential election, I could have voted yeah. in 96, but it didn't. Yeah. Um, since 2000, when I voted in my first presidential election, I have never voted for a Republican or a Democrat for president. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, do with that what you will. Yeah. Well, maybe it's time for change. I have, I think I voted for a constitution party candidate one year, but I, other than that, I voted libertarian or not voted for the president at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, it's, I, Mostly, so my general philosophy of voting, I've said this many times, is uh, vote for a third-party candidate wherever possible and never vote for an incumbent. Yeah. Like, if you don't have, if there's not somebody that you are, like, determined would be best, then never vote for an incumbent, vote for a third party where possible. Because what we really need to free ourselves from is the the two-party Entanglement. existence yeah <laughs> yeah uh, this de facto this rut yeah that we're in um because that's the real problem and and that's i think that that's why we keep getting such bad candidates yeah is that the r's and the d's both have figured out that um fear of the other side is a way more effective tool to motivator to oh, get yeah. people to vote yep so it doesn't matter how bad your candidate is what you got to show is how bad the other candidate is. Exactly. And and you're not going to get people voting for you because of how good your candidate is nearly as effectively as you're going to get people voting against the other guy if you can show how bad they are. Oh, yeah. I mean, is it possible, really, that in however many years it's been, that the best candidates this country had to offer for president were Donald Trump Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, right? <laughs> which it looks like it's going to be three elections. Those are going to be the three candidates that were available to you. Yeah. Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Joe Biden. That's just that wild. the best. This country, there's 330 million people in this country. That's the best that we can do. Right. Cannot be. Yeah. No, no way. And just, if it is, then we may as well just fold well, right now. And all of those, all of those people you just named, like I don't know how old Hillary is, but the other two, like Trump and Biden, are pushing it. Yeah. As far as they're, I mean, Trump looks better than Biden does, but yeah. Trump's not that much younger than Biden. Yeah, Hillary's in her seventies too, I think. I'm, she's up there. Like I don't know, I don't know how old she is, but well, she's... I mean, it's like uh, it's like how they do select judges in the area. Like we vote for judges, but there's only ever one judge running for any position. Yeah. And it's because the community of attorneys has decided who the next guy is. Yeah. Through whatever means. Yeah. Yeah. Through backroom deals is what it is. Yeah. And you're not allowed to run against them. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's only the one guy. And, and I've heard people say like, they will actively come after you. If you, if you just, uh, didn't Ginger run for one years ago? I think ago? so. Like, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Like it's it's not a ple- they don't make it a pleasant experience if you're the outside mm-hmm. guy just going to get on the ballot. Yeah, like, you just ruin your career. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So and you're not going to win anyway. So then you're double screwed. Yeah, and you might be a hundred thousand dollars in debt to uh for um your education still. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. You don't want to ruin your career when you're in that position. Yeah. Uh. Well. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. There's, there's still, you know, there, there's it's, more than a year it's, until it's this gonna election. It's going to be an so. interesting election. I'm, a, I'm excited to see kind of how things play out. Um, I am glad that there are people like Ramaswamy out there saying what they have to say. RFKJ out there saying what they have to say. Something different, something outside of the, the mainstream, at least a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, they're, they're not pushing, obviously, as far as I would like to push. 
and we'll see what happens with the um, with the libertarian candidate if we get somebody who can effectively communicate. A, a lot of people I, uh, liked our interview with Mike Termont. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that him. got a good response. I like him a lot. I mean, you know, I think I, I think that there's an opportunity for us to put up a strong candidate. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that is yet. It may, if it's if it's Termont, then more power. Like I'm yeah. all for it. The only question is, like, do you get media time if you have a strong candidate? Yeah, well, you're going to have to fight for it. But I'll tell you, the other thing is, and that's what makes this election so much different, and the last one was that way in many ways too, is like the mainstream media just doesn't have the stranglehold it used to. That's like, true. And this this election in particular, it might be one through podcast, man. Yeah. RFKJ um, and Ramaswamy both have pushed up in the polls just doing... All alternative media yeah which i don't think it's alternative anymore i think yeah. i think that i think this election may be the one where we see that the alternative media is the media now yeah. well i mean there's something to be said for that certainly um I'm, I'm not sure if this happened if this has happened so much on the left but you know like two big voices on the right that were mainstream that are now outside of the mainstream are tucker carlson and megan kelly and they both have huge shows yeah yeah, exactly. So, oh, what was? I thought you was going to name who's who's the guy that has the blaze. Oh, uh, I can't think of his name. It's no, not there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he's yeah. done. He's done really well since leaving Fox as well. Yeah, you know, it's true. So, I mean, there's like I say, I just we'll see as time goes along here. But I do think that that this is the new medium. You know, Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. That's it. Okay. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, like I say, it should be, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah. I imagine that's true on the left though, too. Like, uh, you know, you got, I mean, this isn't the left exactly, but the, the, so the big alternative media shows are interview shows. Yeah. Tucker Carlson, Megan Kelly, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Um, Glenn Beck, uh, his show, his show's an interview show, isn't it? He does interviews. I don't know if that's what it is uh, um, entirely, but it may be, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any others right now. Yeah. Well, the, we didn't really, I mean, I guess we talked about Trump indirectly a whole bunch, mm -hmm. but we didn't really talk about the fact that uh, you, so Trump didn't go to the debate. He did Tucker Carlson. Yeah. And this was what the day after he had been arraigned. Uh, he, he wasn't arraigned or um, not arraigned, but booked. booked. Okay. I was, yeah. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah. Booked. Um, so, and had the, the picture that right. has been plastered over social media more than anything in my life. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, from the left and right. Like, and it's so funny. I see that picture on people's profiles when I'm just like scrolling through comments because everybody's like throwing it up there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're actually supporters of Trump or like dissidents of Trump. Oh, actually. Because they just put the picture on the profile. It's like, I don't know where you stand on this. <laughs> yeah, we're running a little over time here, so I'll try and keep this short. But this is something that I find really interesting that I think was a huge mistake by the Democrats. Yeah. Um, I think it's a huge mistake for them to go after him in the way that they are, and I think it's a huge mistake for them to promote it the way they are. Yeah. Because there's a whole lot of poor people in this country that feel like that the system is working against them. That... that that either have had it happen to them personally mm -hmm. or have a friend or a family member that the system has absolutely destroyed. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, this is personal for me. Mm -hmm. I've got family and friend members, both, that have been destroyed by this government system mm -hmm. just in in this way. And, and law enforcement specifically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, I, and I think that this is actually like turning people to his side. And I think the most important is. group is the blacks. Yeah. Um, American blacks, because there's poor people all over this country that feel that that Have feel like felt that way. there's a he now he's kind of a kindred spirit. Like he gets it now. He's it's yeah. happening to him now. He'll understand what we've been going through all this time. Yep. But but poor white people, for the most part, living outside the cities, they're probably voting Trump anyway. Yeah. But poor black people living in the cities yeah. weren't voting Trump before. And they might be now. He's one of them now. Yeah. Um, and I've heard, I know you've heard, I've heard it on No Agenda, but I've outside of No Agenda, I've heard the TikToks and the mm -hmm. videos of um, black people that are like, he's one of us. Yeah, like, no, saying, I, was, saying, I was talking to people yeah. uh, about this, and I was like, am I off base? Like, is this, you know, is this like, way off base? And they're like, no. No, it's not. No, um, I agree. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, okay. I mean, we, we could... I mean, we could potentially be setting him up for a landslide victory. Yeah. And what does this country look like if Trump wins in a landslide? 
<laughs> like what? Uh, what I does, shudder to think. <laughs> I mean, like in all seriousness, like yeah. it could, it could, things could actually get worse. Like yeah. It it could get it could get really bad. Yeah. Um. I'm not. I'm not predicting that any of that's going to happen. All I'm saying is, is it is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's. I mean, just go out there and look around. Like you could. The videos are there. There. It's. It's. Something's happening. Yeah. So I did want to talk a little bit about the resurgence of COVID, but we'll just leave that for another time. Oh yeah, no, we're gonna to need to spend a little time on that one. Yeah. So I don't believe the hype I, is all I, I, I well, gotta say. I, I, I posted it to the Facebook page. I'll say it here. Okay. Do not comply. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about it. <laughs> um, I think the theme for the 2024 um, Libertarian National Party convention is become ungovernable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's something like that. Well, that's like, always been a libertarian thing. Like that's, yeah. yeah. Beco- being ungovernable is a, a libertarian thing. So. Yeah. It, it's, so that would be, a, now would be a fitting time to have that as our moniker. <laughs> it's not quite as good as the mask thing from the last one, but. Yeah. Unmasked. Yeah. yeah. Liberty unmasked. Yeah. That's yeah. good too. Um, but yeah, become ungovernable. I think that's what it oh, is. I love it. Hey, I'm all in. It's man. in DC too. Yeah, even better. <laughs> yep. I got to I got to go ahead and get tickets. Like, uh, there's not enough room in the jails for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh they'll ship us all over. They will be all over the country. <laughs> there's not jail. as many of us as you would like there to be. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> so, also true. All um, right, well, let's wrap up there. Um yeah. Trying to think I'm I'm out of town sometime soon, but I don't think it's next week. Okay. Um so I think I should be good next week. Yeah, we'll expect to be back next week. Um, In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, Like and share, comment, subscribe. Um, Leave criticisms or not-so-critical criticisms. Either way. (laughs) Um, Reviews. That's the word that I was actually looking for. We also like those. Yeah, reviews. Your reviews are nice. Um, they help a lot on iTunes. Actually. Well, I was going to say like, and it's something I just kind of thought about was here and today, like it really helps us when you interact with us because mm-hmm. the algorithms on all of these social media sites are pushing against us. Yeah. Us, not us specifically, but people like us. Yeah. So any type of interaction, likes, shares, all of that stuff really does help because like I say, we're fighting the system. Yeah. Help <laughs> us shift the Overton window. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And, uh, and you can do that by, uh, coming back with us here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.